everyone. We are back after our break. I'm here to introduce to you our next two speakers. They are based in Japan. Gary Robert has 19 years experience teaching English in various countries. He has worked on large-scale projects supporting teacher development through reflection and action research. Currently, he teaches at Hitotsubashi University in Japan, and I'm sorry for butchering the name, where he coordinates and manages a team of 12 teachers, overseeing all aspects of the course from materials, assessment, training, and academic policy and strategy. Gary has CELTA, DELTA, and a master's in education from UCL, IOE. Mark Swinho has 12 years experience teaching English. At the British Council, he has worked um, as a coordinator on a junior high school project and as a teacher trainer on a national teacher development program in conjunction with the Japanese Ministry of Education. Currently, he is one of two academic coordinators um, at the same university on a project where he coordinates and manages a team of teachers delivering a communicative academic skills course to over 1,000 first year undergraduates. He has CELTA, DIP TISO, and PGC qualifications and is currently working towards a master's degree in professional development for language education through the Norwich Institute of Language Education. Their talk today will focus on emergency online learning at university level, a success story and lessons learned. Mark? Yep. Okay. There you go. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Fantastic. In that case, if it's okay, I'll, I'll get started then. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this afternoon, uh, Gary and I um, are basically going to talk about uh, the team and the project that we manage um, and how we dealt with the, the switch to online learning as a result of the, the pandemic. Um, and we'll talk about kind of the, the successes that we, that we had um, and also the lessons that we learned from the process. Um, so uh, Gary and I are kind of co-coordinators um, at the British Council um, in Japan. And in this session, we're going to cover the, the following areas. Um, firstly, I'm going to talk about the team and the project context to help you understand um, uh, the area where we work. Uh, and secondly, I'm going to talk about the, the key challenges that the switch to online learning presented for us. After that, Gary's going to take over and talk about the team's response and the lessons that we learned from the experience. Um, if, you've, uh, if you have any questions, of course, we'll, we'll be more than happy to talk about those at the end. Uh, so firstly, the, the context uh, that we work in. Um, basically, the project is a partnership between uh, the British Council and Hitotsubashi University, um, which is a, a university specializing in social sciences in, in West Tokyo. And the course itself that we deliver um, is kind of a hybrid course. It's uh, English for academic purposes, um, but also with a, um, a focus on general communicative uh, skills uh, in an academic context. It's a compulsory course um, for all of the first years, which means it is an accredited course and contributes to their, um, their overall degree. And uh, currently we deliver to approximately a thousand students um, across, two, uh, across two levels. Um, as coordinators, uh, Gary and I work closely uh, together and we work on all aspects of the course and, and, and try to have oversight of, of all aspects of the course, which covers things like uh, making standardized lesson materials, writing the course assessments, um, informal and formal training for the teachers on the team. Um, we also um, have responsibility for kind of strategic um, planning and policy planning to address the, the, the stakeholders' expectations. Uh, we line manage the individual teachers that, that work on the team, and we also teach on the course as well. Uh, the teachers themselves make up the bulk of the team. We have 12 teachers um, with uh, lots of uh, experience, most of them, um, uh, in fact, all of them between five and 20 years of experience. When the switch to online learning happened in, in March 2020, we had four teachers who were actually new to the project, which brought, brought its own challenges, obviously. Um, 
the majority of teachers, however, had already worked on the project for a, a number of years. Um, previously, the, the course had been an entirely face-to-face -face course. Um, students would come to campus and receive two lessons a week of face-to-face uh, -face tuition. Um, but um, in March 2020, the decision was, was taken, as with universities across the country, that all lessons would be taken online. Um, however, the, the real uh, challenge for us was that we were informed of this uh, about one week, uh, in fact, slightly less than one week before the start of uh, term. As you can imagine, that was quite a uh, motivating factor, let's say. Um, as part of the uh, decision to go online, the, the university actually gave us a, a buffer of four weeks. They postponed the start of term by four weeks and they asked us to do two things. Um, they gave us two weeks to prepare for online lessons. So in terms of training ourselves up and preparing materials and so on. Um, but they also asked us to provide uh, an asynchronous course um, via Edmodo, which is a, a virtual learning platform similar to Google Classroom's uh, uh, Moodle, perhaps you've come across before. So the timetable looked something like this in, uh, back in April. We had two uh, induction sessions uh, with teachers uh, where Gary and I uh, needed to kind of explain the, the situation um, and draw on teachers' experience to, to brainstorm ideas. Then we had two weeks uh, to prepare, followed by two weeks to deliver the asynchronous course and continue preparing. And then, of course, in, in May, the, the main course itself was due to start. So initially, the first thing we did um, at induction was to conduct a 360 degree review of the course in terms of the materials, uh, the assessments, the training needs, the um, direction that we would need to go as a team in an online environment and of course this was a new uh, this was new to all of us um, and we decided that the certainly the best way forward was to kind of do this as a team effort um, and as such we collected questions concerns uh, feedback from teachers on what they felt they needed and this fed into the preparation work we did um, what we found initially was that teachers were very eager to, to just get going, to start planning. They, they felt under pressure to understandably to produce materials and lesson plans to, to begin delivering online lessons. However, um, the situation was that most of us had never taught online before. Um, and we decided that rather than getting stuck into lesson planning and writing new assessments and such, we needed to, to take a more methodical approach um, which meant identifying gaps in our knowledge, identifying training needs, um, and kind of planning out the preparation days based on that. So uh, the key challenges that we faced fell into, broadly speaking, fell into five areas. Um, the first was, was training needs. Um, the second was well-being, physical and mental. Thirdly, communication. Fourth, logistics and equipment. And finally, the, the course outline and the syllabus itself. So in terms of training needs, uh, we had 12 teachers plus two coordinators plus a thousand students um, who all would require certain training in terms of online platforms, in terms of using the technology, and particularly for us, uh, online pedagogy and online uh, assessment, uh, how to conduct those. Uh, as I mentioned previously, it's an accredited course, so assessment needed to be valid. Uh, in terms of well-being, we had health and safety concerns, um, managing teachers and students' physical and mental well-being, and also managing uh, work-life balance and having a healthy work-life balance. Uh, thirdly, communication. This was crucial. Um, professional and social networks in terms of meeting each other face to face and having interactions face to face on campus were were removed and we needed to find a way of replicating that online. We also needed a way of organizing meetings, formal training, informal training, and of course, communicating with students as well. Uh, logistics, basically, uh, this was um, a case of making sure everyone had what they needed, people needed um, uh, headsets, people needed internet connections, stable internet connections. So th that was kind of the admin side of, of things, which um, 
sometimes gets forgotten about, but is uh, very important. If people can't access the internet, they can't access the learning. And finally, perhaps the, the biggest challenge was uh, the course outline in the syllabus itself. Um, we needed to redefine course aims. There were there were certain tasks that, that uh, uh, certain end of unit tasks that, that would need to be changed for an online context. Lesson plans needed to be changed uh, in terms of activities that couldn't be administered face to, uh, that couldn't be administered online, such as mingle activities and, and certain presentations and things like that. And also the academic year was shortened. Um, by four weeks, which meant um, assessments were affected and we lost uh, six lessons um, from the course. So those were the challenges uh, we faced, which were, were considerable. And I'll hand over to Gary, who's going to talk about how the team uh, responded to those challenges. Uh, Gary, you muted. Okay, yes. So I'm going to talk through the times. Of... So first week, um, about it. So we focused on the well-being and equipment. So obviously, teachers were working at home now. So we need to make sure they had a safe working environment. So we we sent them a, an online survey, raise their awareness of issues related to working on online. Then we sent them a survey and found out what they needed to be able to set themselves up. And then we sourced and delivered the equipment. We basically took stuff from the British Council office. Then we needed to focus on communication, how we could work together as a remote team. Um, we started to use Microsoft Teams before, and then we just started to continue using that. And we set up channels, chats, we were doing video calls, and then we started to use the file storage and store all our materials on Teams. Um, Mark talked about getting feedback in the induction and doing that 360. So we had all these questions and all these concerns from the teachers. So what we did is kind of went through that and kind of teased out five areas that we thought were the main focus that we'd focus on in this initial training. So tech tools was effectively, so the, 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 the online space is defined by these tech tools. So that's where we're, we're having the classroom. So we needed to understand that. We needed to understand how we were gonna interact in this new space. What was the pedagogy of this new space? Okay, so obviously it's at a credit course we need to assess. So how are we gonna do that? How, what effect does that have on our assessment? What effect does it have on our monitoring and feedback? Students were then coming into this space. So how could we support them in this space so they were interacting effectively? And then finally, our materials, how could we embed our pedagogy, how we could we embed the assessment and how we could we embed learner training into our materials so we could use our materials to teach effectively. So we had this initially blank uh, month, so we started to fill it, we had our first week. Okay, but what we needed to do now was focus on what we were going to do each day, we still had this team of remote teachers, um, we needed to come up with things. Um, so we focused on a daily schedule. So we'd meet every day uh, from 11 to 12. We'd have a morning briefing and we'd review things from the previous day, pre previous learning, previous issues. And then we'd set teachers a task every day to do, focused on our key areas of pedagogy, tech tools, etc. We put teachers in buddy groups. So from 12 to 5, they would go away in groups of three teachers and we'd mix the new and experienced teachers. And the idea of that was to sort of build a teamwork, uh, develop cohesion amongst the team because we had these new people and that would provide support. And we regularly mixed up these buddy groups. So the buddy groups would go away and complete the tasks that we'd set them. They would do it individually or in group, doing research, planning, et cetera. Uh, so this is the typical task we set them. So this is related to tech. So they would look at the, the tool and look at the features and think about how they could do it. Um, this one's on assessment. This is about speaking. So they look at our rubric, look at the tests, sort of critically analyze them and think about how we could adapt our assessment to fit the rubric and fit the new context. Uh, they'd come back after they'd done their research, share as a buddy group, and then they would discuss, train, reflect and then make recommendations to us. Okay, so we, there's no way we could suddenly produce a training scheme 
uh, do all this research. So we effectively crowdsourced that. Um, and then while they were doing that, we were sorting through their recommendations during our own research and coming up with training checklists, materials, procedures, policies, course assessment. We were basically doing, doing the course based on what they were telling us and then setting new tasks. Also planning ahead, always kind of thinking next day, next week, next month. We'd catch up with individual teachers, constantly checking in on them, making sure they were okay and there was no problems, uh, liaising with uh, senior management at university. And obviously this is a completely new way of working. So we'd constantly be getting feedback. How's the communication going? How's the buddy groups? How's this? And making adjustments to our way of working. So from the first week, the second week emerged. Okay, so we're gonna look at the second week timetable. Okay, so we've got the context. So we kind of explored that through the training. Now we need to pull it together and get teachers planning and training. So the initial thing, planning and teaching. So the initial thing they wanted to do, we now could do that, we felt. So we got them doing micro teaching. So in pairs, they would plan, adapt a lesson, teach for 30 minutes to another group, get feedback, and then make recommendations about sort of activities and things like that. Um, and again, so this idea of crowdsourcing, planning. Um, so the next thing we can, we had to shift from the Zoom focus to Edmodo because we had this next Edmodo course coming up. So we decided to plan out the next day. So two days preparing for that, one day sort of pulling it together and practicing and then finalizing the final tasks before we go live with a thousand students on Edmodo. Um, so the two week course. So we decided that as we'd spent a week preparing for Zoom, we felt that our students also needed that. So teachers created uh, four tasks, micro teach them sort of on, on Edmodo to another group, uh, got feedback and made recommendations to us. And Mark and I finalized the Edmodo call, uh, tasks that the students, the teachers had uh, decided. Again, this idea of crowdsourcing. Okay, the tasks that they chose, uh, they chose a, a get to know you task. So the idea was the students were all coming into their Edmodo class. We wanted them to get to know each other and build an online community. So we got some tasks helping them to do that. Uh, pros and cons of online learning. So we wanted them to understand the context that they were coming into. Of, clearly there were benefits, but there were constraints. And we really wanted them to see that there was value to this course. It wasn't a substandard kind of face to uh, online course. It was equal to face to face. And therefore we'd increase, we hope to increase their motivation because they'd see this as something beneficial. Familiarizing with tech and then code of conduct. So basically getting them to discuss and come up with rules. So they knew how to behave in this completely new space. So they were the four tasks. Uh, and then finally we had to communicate and bring a thousand students from the university system onto our Edmodo and then welcome them and make them feel that they were in a classroom and they were interacting with their teachers and this classroom. Okay, so in the first week, clearly teachers were going off doing this research and learning on their own. And we wanted to capture that. So we decided to organize mini insets um, to sort of share learning that had gone on in the group amongst the team. So we organized these daily insets and teachers had 30 minutes to share an idea or some tech, or something they've been learning across the weeks. And this is incredibly popular. We had people from all across British Council joining us. Um, then we had to focus on week three and week four. Um, okay, so we started doing the uh, Edmodo course, managing that. So again, we had to shift our focus to Zoom because we've got Zoom course coming up. So also we decided to start preparing for uh, the Zoom course. Um, so the Edmodo course is running, we're supporting students interacting with them, and then we're planning on Zoom. Um, we decided only to plan the first 12 lessons out of the uh, half of the course because we knew once we started, it would be obvious that certain things wouldn't work and certain things would work and we'd start coming up with new ways of working. So we wanted to keep flexibility in the course and we continued to adapt and change the course as we went on. Uh, again, this idea of crowdsourcing, a Zoom course. So now we're starting the course. 
So before we had these daily meetings, now we switch to weekly meetings. So again, we continue with this idea of reflecting on our course, on our materials, discussing issues, coordinating and planning. Also, we organized some drop-ins. So at the start, as soon as we started the course, Mark and I went in and dropped in all the courses to get a sense of how it's, what was going on. Got ideas for training and planning, which we fed into the weekly meetings. We also organized peer observations so teachers could go and observe other teachers and learn from them and they could start to develop uh, relationships and sharing best practice. Um, we continue with the catch ups, making sure teachers are OK um, and supporting them in that. And then British Council has got its own formal learning aims and observations. So we continue. We, we, we did that as well. And we encouraged teachers and we continually got feedback from the students about the course. And we did a couple of big surveys across the thousand students sort of midway and at the end and used that to help us inform the course. Okay, so again, as we're going, we're continually collecting data, we're continually an analyzing and the course is continually adapting to this new context that's emerging. So the outcomes, students hit, hit the ground running. There were very few problems. We were expecting a lot of problems, but actually there were, there were hardly any. The course went very smoothly. Teachers were incredibly satisfied with the course. Um, we were externally evaluated by the course, which they do by the university, which they do every year. And we scored the highest out of all of the years that we've been doing the project. Um, so that was really rewarding for us and the teachers. However, there was a couple of caveats, I think. Uh, so other courses at the university were going on, but most of them were, were just students just sitting at home watching videoed lectures. Uh, and we were the only class where students were interacting and, and developing genuine relationships with their, their classmates, which was something really, really beneficial for students. Um, there were some less than positive student contact, uh, comments. They've, they talked about isolation and some tech and communication problems. And ultimately, students would prefer to meet face to face. When we asked them, we gave them that choice. They said they would prefer face to face, but it was mainly because they wanted to meet their classmates. It wasn't, they didn't mention anything about it being better for them academically. And of course, you know, me and Mark are here presenting, but it's a completely team effort amazing students, great teachers. We had a lot of support from the British Council management and university staff. Okay, so quickly lessons learned. So reflecting on this experience, Mark and I sort of teased out seven key lessons. Okay, so obviously at the beginning, we really didn't know what was going on. So there was a lot of ambiguity and unknowns, but we accepted that and we just, we, you know, we, we sought data. We, we looked, tried to find out what was going on. We got feedback. And from all that data, we look for trends, we look for patterns, we tried to kind of organize processes and procedures that would help us. We clearly communicated that to teachers, got feedback with them, discussed with them about that before rolling things out. And then clearly, as you can see, a lot of it was crowdsourced, you know, we, we couldn't do it. Um, and we were continually experimenting, continue adapting the course as we went. And then finally, at the beginning, there was a lot of unloans, but we knew if we had a good system, a good process, we would achieve something beneficial um, and that would be useful. Okay, so that's the end, a little bit over, so I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. Well, thank you both uh, <laughs> for this presentation. Um, we're waiting for a few more questions, but um, wow, I, I do have a few for you guys. <laughs> Sounds like um, an exciting and, and, and huge project that you managed to pull together in a very short period of time. Um, was it within a month, if I was following correctly, from April, from March 20th until the end of April, more or less, or mid-April? Yeah, but we, yeah. remember, we all, we'd already been teaching for face to face for a couple of years. So we had a lot of systems and processes in, in line. So a lot of it was just shifting that to an online context. So it wasn't as if we were starting from scratch. That would have been a bit, a bit, a bit much. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. uh, but well, again, in, in sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, go ahead. 
I was going to say, so, I mean, the processes we talked there, I mean, we kind of, I mean, that's a little bit how we'd been working anyhow in the sense of maybe not the ambiguity, but we're always trying to get feedback. We're always trying to improve the course. Um, so there was a lot of these ways of working already. It was just like, okay, right, let's pull them together. Let's sort of mm -hmm. hone them. And they mm -hmm. really sort of came to the fore. So again, it, it seemed like a more of a natural evolution because the course had been continually evolving, mm -hmm. continually sort of working together as a team. But obviously it sort of went into XX in that context. Yeah. Well, a question that's coming in is, um, do you think there are any aspects of the online format that you think improve academically on face-to-face -face, uh, from a pedagogical point of view? For example, would you do online even if you could do face-to-face? -face? Mark, do you wanna? Um, so, well, purely academically, um, it, it's quite, that's a, a very interesting question. Um, I think one thing that we found, let's say, easier and more efficient was listening to students. Um, when you've got students in breakout rooms, if you've got 10 students in a classroom, face to face classroom, there's, there's a lot of background noise. There's a question of where you stand in the classroom and, and how you monitor. Uh, and I think as a team, we found that listening to students and therefore providing feedback that was based on students needs um, was actually in some ways easier to do. Um, so that, that's probably the first thing that, that comes to mind for me. Um, uh, uh, from the outset, giving feedback was actually one of the things that, that uh, teachers were a little bit worried about. How do we provide feedback when we don't have a whiteboard and we don't have uh, pieces of paper and things like this? Um, but actually, I think that that came through as a strength of the course in the first uh, in the first semester. Um, yeah, other, I don't know, Gary might have something to add to that. Yeah, and the other thing that, that came out of it is the plenary, is that we're pushing students into breakout rooms. There's a lot of unknowns. You're dipping in yeah. there. How do you have oversight of that? Well, yeah. you can't. But what you do is when you pull them out, it's that plenary where you're teasing out, randomly choosing people to be accountable. What have you been doing in your breakout room? Share them, pushing them, interacting with them and pulling together and teasing out the learning that's gone on in the breakout room that a lot of times is hidden to you and hidden to other students. Yeah. So our sort of plenary skills has been something we've really pushed on teachers. It's like, okay, you need to get good at plenary. It's not just set up an activity, come out, oh, nice one, a little bit of feedback, mm. next one. It's like, no, you've got to be drawing out learning. You've got to be setting things up, interacting stu with students in a, in a really effective way, nice. and then moving them on to the, so that, I think that, and that's really effective in classroom as well, but it was kind of gets hidden a little bit. And, um, but because it's such a big thing in a breakout, in an online uh, environment, it becomes much more obvious as a teaching skill. That's, that's a good point. Um, another question is, how was the students learning achievement compared to before COVID-19? Any drastic increase? actually i think the engagement went up because they're they're stuck at home and this is their only outlet literally they're just watching videos at home that are posted online they're coming in they're chatting to us they're engaging on edmodo so we had much higher engagement um usually we get a few students who kind of i mean it's it's a high level university and they're usually super motivated but there's always a few that sort of drift off they form little cliques. They sort of get a little bit distracted by other things, but there was nothing to distract them. It was like, this is the only course. This is their sort of social life in a way. And they really dived into it. So I felt that we, we had much more engagement from the students um, yeah. across the course. Um, there's a very interesting question that I think everyone who's teaching online has tackled um, this problem. Um, any advice on tackling cheating cases online? Well, we, Mark, we, do you want to go over that? Sorry, I was muted there, wasn't I? Um, that, uh, that's an interesting one. One of the, one of the repercussions of taking the uh, assessments online was uh, the security issue. Um, mm -hmm. What we did, for example, what we did with the writing test um, this uh, this past semester. In, in previous years, students um, would sit in a classroom with a pen and paper and they'd be given an essay question, would write an essay. 
Um, this time around, obviously, with students at home, with the access, to, with access to the internet, with access to dictionaries, with access to to everything else, we we simply can't police police that. Um, so what we ended up doing was doing an open book, uh, timed, written. Um, exercise instead so we gave students an essay question we gave them 60 minutes um and we we allowed them to look at their homework research we allowed them to to use dictionaries and, and things like that so I'm, I'm not sure that whether that answers the question or not but i think that that's kind of informative in in showing how assessments needed to to change to meet the the new context i don't know if that, if that makes sense and we also cut the listening and speaking because we realized there was problems of managing that and online so and we sort of upped um, extensive listening and reading so we had that as a, a real core part of our course so constantly doing extensive listening activities and extensive reading activities and sharing yeah. them in the course so we had that as a strand but not assessed and then we focused on the reading and writing oh, sorry the speaking and listening and the speaking actually was, was was quite easy to or relatively easy to do online in breakout rooms um, you know, we had to tweak it, but we found that um, uh, not so difficult to run. And our, our students, we're quite lucky because it is, it is a very prestigious university and they're very high ach achieving students. Mm. So cheating is not really, and also you don't set them up to fail. Yeah. You set them up to pass and do well. So you make everything really explicit. This is what you need to do. This is how we've set this up to help you to succeed in this exam. Here's the rubric. Here's all the things you need to do. Now, here's your chance to do it. So they're set up. They, they, there's no reason why they should fail. They know what they have to do. We've been practicing and drilling them for it. Um, so it sort of removes that need to cheat, I think, because we're sort of mm -hmm. making everything open to them. Um, well, thank you both so much for this uh, very interesting, and I think also very helpful and useful um, presentation about online teaching and ways to, to tackle this. Um, for everyone else, please stay tuned for our last presenter from China. We'll be back online in eight minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Gary and Mark. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.